Good afternoon, my name is Alina Shotsova, I'm an immigration attorney from Brooklyn, New York. In today's video, I would like to answer uh, the most one of the most common questions I receive. If you can do anything, or what can you do to get a decision on your case? Let's say your case got stuck, and what, if anything, you can do to move that case along? Well, the answer to this question actually will depend on two things. What kind of case you have, the kind of case you have, and uh, on which stage of the process you're at. Have you been called for the interview or not? Um, did you file for anything after the interview or not? For example, let's talk about asylum case. It's a very common category of cases that where people are waiting for the decisions or waiting for the interview for a very long time. So let's say you're somebody who filed a case and you have not been called for the interview. Very often I receive this question, people ask me, can I do something to have my interview faster? Yes, you can, really, but to qualify for the expedited um, procedure, expedited request, um, you have to meet certain requirements and it's very rare that the person will indeed meet those requirements. In some asylum officers, um, in some asylum officers we have something that's called short list. Short list is different from request to expedite. If a request to expedite your asylum interview will be granted only for humanitarian purposes, let's say there is a medical emergency of some sort, Shortlist is a different thing. Shortlist, and again, it's not in every asylum office, not in every jurisdiction that it's, it's going to be available, to my knowledge, but where it is available, shortlist will place you um, on a special list to be called for the interview faster on, on a short notice. One uh, slot will be available. That's called a shortlist. So it's different. It's a, it's a different line of cases than expedited request. So that's what you can do. Your attorney can ask to be placed on a short list. And if there is a slot available, time available for you, you will be called faster on a short notice, uh, a matter of days usually uh, to appear for an asylum interview. It means you have to be ready any minute. Okay. So that's what's going on with asylum interview cases. Now, what to do if you already had your interview and it's taking a long time to get a decision on, on your case. Here you need to really think, do you want to expedite the decision or not? Because as you can understand, decision on a case may always be negative. Sometimes you or your attorney may not even predict why. Maybe the officer will see a different angle to your case. Uh, maybe there is something else in your file that the officer may consider negative information or maybe the situation in your country uh, according to the officer's information is different from what you described and you you may <clears throat> get a denial in certain situations there is a benefit in receiving denial later than sooner because a person may accumulate necessary 10 years of continuous presence in the united states that will potentially open the door for them to file for cancellation of removal in case a person is um, transferred to court, right? So before you request a decision in your case, you, you consult with an attorney and see if it's going to be to your benefit to get that fast decision, right? Or you may kill your chances of getting something later on. Now, usually to follow up on the asylum case, if you're a person with no attorney, you will have to appear in person in uh, an asylum office because that USCIS customer service system, because of asylum confidentiality laws, will not allow you to receive any information by phone. All right. So that's the situation with asylum cases. Let's talk about other cases, adjustment of status cases. Let's say you appeared for the interview and now you're waiting for your decision for a very long time. What to do? Well, there are various things you can do. Some of them are more effective than others. Um, you can contact an ombudsman office, USAS ombudsman office. You can contact a congressman or a senator, local um, congressman or senator's office. They can place an inquiry on your case. 
You can, of course, make an InfoPass appointment with USCIS. You can sue the government if you want to get the decision if your case pending is really, really pending for a long time. That's about that. Uh, USCIS as a government has a, a right, uh, an interest in conducting background checks on you, and sometimes they're going to answer that the case is not being decided just because uh, there are extensive background checks, and that's going to be that. That's their right. Unfortunately, there is not much you can do. From what I, I've seen, if there is a lawsuit in cases where um, the decision has been pending for outrageous amount of time, um, for let's say adjustment of status, and there is a lawsuit, the case will be resolved in a matter of months after the lawsuit is filed. All right, and it's a lawsuit against, lawsuit against the government to get the decision. There is a particular category of cases where you can do something faster without the lawsuit. Let's say you're waiting for the decision on removal of the conditional residency. In this particular situation, you can file for naturalization if you otherwise qualified, and this will expedite in most situations, it will expedite the decision on your case. All right, so that's one tool that practitioners are using to get a decision on removal of the conditional residency. And finally, administrative processing. That's another very common category. Can you do something to get a decision on the case, on the visa case that got stuck in administrative processing? Well, of course, you can follow up with the consulate, okay? Of course, you can also uh, write to LegalNet visa office that supervises the work of the consulates. And very often it does help, actually, but sometimes it doesn't. Again, if we're dealing with security background checks, most likely our following up will help to some extent, but not too much. What it does help with, I've noticed that sometimes it helps to, to find out what is it that the Consular, consular office is looking for, let's say, employment history. And you can provide that employment history that you neglected to provide when you filed for your visa or it was incomplete or the consular decided it was incomplete or they want to know more about you. So it can be helpful to this extent. But administrative processing and one, is one of the toughest situations that the person can find themselves in in terms of uh, you know getting decisions and having the case stuck and not knowing what to do but again i would say it's 50 50 50 50 chances that the tools that i know of can expedite your case when you when you're stuck in administrative processing and again each situation is different you need to talk to a lawyer speak to with your lawyer sometimes it's just a matter of knocking on the doors and trying to get the decision trying to have the case moving maybe the officer who worked on your case changed maybe uh, uh, again there is some sort of um, investigation maybe it depends on many different factors once i had a very weird case when there was a negative information in my person's uh, in my client's file and it wasn't directly communicated to us but then we kind of learned that that's what it was and when we addressed the issue the case just got resolved in a matter of minutes really it was very interesting so each situation is very very different so i hope this video was helpful and you can read more about various immigration situations on our website www.shautsova.com thank you